Hi everybody! Today is the four week update for our little litter of afternoon tea puppies. These are medium Australian Labradoodle puppies and today we're going to go through each of the puppies, tell you a little bit about them, what they've been up to for the past week and give you some information on their birth weights. So we'll do the puppies in birth order. Now, first of all, for the litter as a whole, they have started to eat uh, solid food. So you will see that all of the puppies are quite crunchy and dirty this week. Now they're not dirty, dirty, but what they have is some of their food stuck on their feet a little bit, and their fur is a little bit crusty because what they're eating is pablum, goat's milk, and pumpkin. The pumpkin is quite sticky, as is the pablum. And right now, while they're learning how to negotiate eating out of a pan, they tend to wear more of their food than they actually get in their tummies. At least the two big kids in this litter do. The little one in this litter, he gets it pretty much all in his tummy. He is much more skilled than the two bigger dogs. So overall for this week, the litter has started to develop their teeth coming in. They have become much more aware of their surroundings. So we're starting to do a lot more work with them with respect to desensitization. This is when the puppies become really quite aware of what's going on and they often are like, oh, what was that? I have never heard that before. What's that? I've never seen that before. So this is when we start to introduce things, not in a big way, but in a nice gradual positive way so that they get lots of new experiences that men end up making them feel confident, curious, and happy about new things. So right now when we were doing the video, Reynolds was moving the crate around to get it ready to bring the puppies from the maternity, or from the nursery rather, into the studio. And Atticus here was just quite petrified by all of that. He just was like, what is that and what is going on? So he wasn't too thrilled. So those are the types of things we make note of. And then we adjust our day and their experiences so that those become things that they are not worried about in the least. So after we finish the videos, we will go back today and we'll use that crate several times around Atticus and make sure he is held and gets all sorts of comfort and love to make sure that it's a positive experience for him. <coughs> Excuse me. So Atticus is little red collar boy in this litter. He is quite a character. He is what I would call a sloth. He loves to eat, he loves to sleep, and he loves being upside down showing everybody his great big tummy. Yes, oh and apparently right now he's very interested in showing everybody his tonsils too. So he's giving us a yawn because he's a little bit stressed from the experience of hearing the crate and he's just not too sure yet. So Atticus is a beautiful tri-colored phantom. He's a beautiful, beautiful brown with lots of highlights and you can see how his coat is starting to look really funny right now. So it's really lifting over here on the left side of him. It's still perfectly straight and flat down the middle of his back. And over here on his right side, it's not quite lifted yet, but you can see all those individual lines, the waves coming in, and this is all going to lift in the next few days so that it matches over here. So at least then he'll have matching electrified looks on both sides. Oh my goodness, but your feet are all full of pumps pumpkin, aren't they? So what happens is the puppies slide through the pan quite often. They, their vision, although they can see, it's not very acute or particularly precise yet. So when they're looking at you or they're looking at Maisie and they're running towards you or Maisie, they don't observe that the pan is in front of them and then they walk right through it or they fall in it. Yes, I know you have fallen in it upside down several times, haven't you? Oh, that's such a character. And Atticus has just the most delightful temper. He is just a doll. You can see how affectionate he is. He is a real people guy. We just love this little boy. And Atticus is up to 1.6 kilograms. So he is having no problem in the weight gain department and continues to grow. He's going to be a nice big stocky fellow when he grows up. So that's Atticus, Mr. Red Collar. The next board in this litter is our pretty little lady collar girl. Hello sweetheart. A pink collar girl is also a chocolate 
phantom try. She's very similar to Atticus, just with a little less white showing. And if you look on her back here, you will see, you can see very good evidence of her goat's milk and pumpkin that she's wearing. And you'll also see that her coat is not quite as lifted as Atticus's is yet. It will be, she's just not there yet. So she's lifting right around here, around the collar of her coat. And on the side, she's still fairly flat. But just like him, you can see over here on her left side, all these individual bits starting to form, and this is what's going to start to lift next. That's if it's not all glued down from all the pablum, right, baby girl? Yeah. Now these puppies, as I said, are getting their teeth in. So now that they've got their teeth in, they can actually graduate onto a raw food diet. So probably midweek, we will introduce that to them and see what they think about that, right? You can see on this beautiful little girl how she's got that lovely white bib showing. It just really sets off all of her pretty phantom and chocolate colors. And she has a really pretty nice head, really nice shape, a good stop. And then she's got that, oh, she's just got the sweetest little nose. She has a very sweet expression. This is a nice little girl. She has a really even temperament. She's just nice smack dab in the middle. She's not too outgoing and, and energetic, and she's definitely not shy by any means. She's got really just the calmest and best even demeanor so far. Of course, they're only four weeks old, so things will change. But so far, that's what we're seeing. Hello, baby. Hello. She has very nice eye contact. She is always looking for cues from people. She's not quite as licky as Atticus is, but she still is a very affectionate puppy. And Miss Pink Collar Girl, guess what? She weighs 1.6 as well. So she's caught up to her brother now. And they both weigh exactly the same amount. So that's our little Pinky. Next is our little squirt in the litter. This is Raisin. Hello, buddy. Raisin, as if you know, if you've been following our videos, is our little warrior. He's our little puppy that we almost lost due to a bacterial infection, but he is such a fighter that he soldiered on and he continues to gain weight and develop and just do everything so nicely. So you can see he has his two beautiful eyes showing now, no problem. He can hear without any issue and his teeth are starting to come in and even his coat is starting to lift. So he, there's no uh, delay at all in that development. You'll see his coat is lifting actually even more so than Pink's because he has it on both sides of him here. And really and truly his coat is actually lifted even more than Atticus's. So he has some lift going on here, some here, and under his little collar. Hey buddy, hi. This puppy we all love. Mr. Raisin just steals hearts. Part of that is, of course, because he is so tiny and there's something about a little tiny creature that just draws you right in. He is an indomitable spirit. He is such a trooper. Now, if anybody has mastered eating out of the pan well, it's Raisin. Because he often gets pushed off of the milk bar by his two siblings who are so much larger than he is. And by the way, Raisin is 507 grams. So he has just broken the one pound mark. Yay! Where's the other two? I think 1.6 is uh, around three pounds. Uh, I'm not very good at doing those conversions, but I think off the top of my head, that's about right. So he, they are three pounds and he's one pound. So it's a quite a difference in, in size. So they can boss him around quite right. Readily. But he ha holds his own. They still also still cuddle up with him. They sleep next to him quite often, but now we'll find him sleeping on his own. So that's really great that he's starting to develop his own independence, which is exactly what we would be hoping for at this stage in his mental and emotional development. And we've also found him a couple of times now upside down with all of his feet straight in the air. <laughs> Yesterday I walked in and he had his front paws curled in half, but his back feet were sticking straight up, <laughs> just like they were, I don't know, like popsicle sticks. It just looked hilarious. Of course, it was a time I didn't have my camera with me, but it was so funny. But he's very relaxed. He does have a really good level of competence, despite being so much smaller than everybody. And he will talk a little bit now. He does talk to Maisie. Um, no barking or growling, but he does have a little bit hoo, 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 here, every now and then. But generally, he's exceptionally quiet. 
So our little heart stealer is doing really well coming along and we're just so proud of this little man. And at 507 grams, he's really, really doing a nice amount of weight gain. So that is our little raisin. And that is all the puppies in the litter as we only have three puppies in this litter. Maisie herself, our mama Labradoodle, is doing quite nicely. Uh, she is bouncy, happy, lively. She is also a bit of a devil child. She will jump right out of the nest area whenever she's decided she's had enough of being in there. Mm, Maisie's also been a little bit uh, fussy about what she eats. So what she likes to do is go in one of our donut beds, curl herself up, in the donut bed and then she waits for one of us to come and feed her by hand. Uh, so a little bit of a princess and a little bit of a drama there uh, but uh, at least she's eating before we had to actually force feed her because she wasn't eating. So it's, she's very fussy about what she eats right now. The only thing that she has any desire to eat is uh, pure beef raw. Nothing with any fruits and vegetables, thank you very much. And I don't want any of those other proteins. I only want beef right now. Now that, that'll change. She'll probably decide by the day after tomorrow that she only wants to eat chicken or turkey or who knows what. But we always have a, a good variety. It's really important when you're feeding raw, it doesn't matter what dog it is or the circumstances, that you give them a variety of proteins. You alternate between red and white, and within white, for instance, you have chicken and turkey. In the reds, you use all the red proteins, so you have lamb and, and duck and pork and beef and bison as well, so that they always are having a really nice, good variety of things. And if you've got a dog with any allergy issues, you can try rabbit, kangaroo, llama, those types of things. If you don't, then don't worry about it. There's no need to be feeding those different types of things and paying a fortune for it. If your dog likes the other things and does well on it, then just stick with those. Just remember to change it up. Otherwise, you get a really fussy eater. Um, now, the girls, when, they're, uh, when they have their babies and when they're pregnant, they tend to be fussy. And they're also very well aware of, hmm, I know if I do this, somebody will come along and feed it to me and I'll get a bit more attention. So the other day, uh, I was away with Spirit and um, Reynolds had to feed everybody. Normally, I feed everybody. And because it was rental, they all ate just like that. There was no, mm, well, I don't know. And could you put a little bit of this on top? And really, I would prefer it this way. They just ate. So it was obvious right away that they were manipulating me and training me. And I was always letting them have their way. So we've switched it up now. And rental feeds them um, other than Spirit. Spirit just had her puppies yesterday. So I'm feeding Spirit. Um, because Spirit won't come out to eat yet. She won't leave her puppies at all. Uh, but Re uh, Reynolds feeding the other dogs and uh, we've had a lot more success and meal time is much quicker now. So just remember that when you get your puppy, if they start doing things and you're like, oh gee whiz, maybe I should try this or that, probably your puppy has got you trained. It doesn't matter how experienced you are. I've been breeding dogs since 1981 and they have me all wrapped around their little paws quite readily. So don't ever feel foolish. Don't feel that, you know, boy, am I ever dumb? I let my dog teach me. We all do it. We all love them. We all want to give them the best that we possibly can. So just don't worry about that. Just, it's good if you have fresh eyes and someone can say, mm, I think maybe your dog is actually managing you. So just keep that in mind when you get your puppy home. We really hope you enjoyed the video and seeing the kids, especially knowing how well Raisin's doing. Uh, and if you like the video, please give us a thumbs up um, and subscribe to our channel because each time we do a litter update, we give you a little bit of different information here and there. So there's always a little something we try and throw in there for you to learn a bit more about. And thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next week.